see this disqualification of Rahul Gandhi from the Lok Sabha is a reverse engineered process. The BJP wanted a certain outcome. The BJP want to, wants to deny Rahul Gandhi the floor of the house where he will be, he uses to raise uncomfortable questions on, on the Prime Minister and the BJP. In order to deny him that floor, in order to deny him that platform, they have to disqualify him and prevent him from being a member of parliament. In order to disqualify somebody from being a member of an elected member, from being a member of the Lok Sabha, they need to have a trigger which will cause the disqualification. And the trigger for a disqualification is a two-year sentence. Never in the history of judicial India has anybody been found guilty for slander and given a two-year sentence. Never. There has been no legal precedence. There is also two components to a case. One is the conviction and second is the sentencing. And there is always a weightage given in the sentencing on the gravity of the offence, whether the offender is a serial offender, whether it has had any social impact. And you take into all those factors. Nothing was taken into factor and the maximum sentence was given, which has no precedence none whatsoever. So the sentence then triggers the disqualification. So in order to achieve the disqualification, they needed a trigger and the trigger was the sentence. In order to get a sentence, they needed a trial. In order to get a trial, they needed a case. So they went shopping for a case which was dormant, reactivated it after for a few years, then fast-tracked it in the last 15 days, got the trigger which would give them the, uh, the, the sentence which would, which, would, which would lead to a disqualification and now which would further lead to an eviction from his house which he's been living there for 20 years. Because they do not want to answer uh, uncomfortable questions. They do not, questions raised on the floor of the parliament have a certain weightage. They are part of the record forever. They do not want the unanswered questions to be recorded because they will never be able to answer the uncomfortable questions Mr. Rahul Gandhi is asking of the government and the Prime Minister personally. That is for the Prime Minister, the articulate Prime Minister to explain. The Prime Minister has many forums. The many questions have been raised to him. If he's uncomfortable in answering the question in, in, in a press conference, he always he can always use this, the, the monologue platform which he has every week every weekend, which he can use to answer these questions. It's really up to the Prime Minister to end to end this controversy by, by taking by taking it head on and for explaining it and putting an end to it. But he's refusing to do it. And the more the silence of the Prime Minister, in fact, uh, you know, continues the, 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 the questions being raised. See, this is not just an Indian story anymore because it has got international ramifications if Indian news agencies and Indian investigative agencies don't dwell into it because this is now a trans-global uh, corporation which has got financing aspects internationally. There will, like the Hindenburg report, there will be other, uh, uh, not necessarily regulatory agencies alone, but also investigative agencies and also uh, journalistic agencies, which will start looking into it. it. Now, I don't think you can keep a lid on this anymore. This is a story of interest globally, and more and more people will spend time and energy looking at it very seriously. Not for a minute am I saying that the reports are absolutely true, but the only way to find whether the reports are true or not is to have an impartial investigation. I mean, this government, uh, launches investigations and launches agencies on people based on very frivolous uh, hearsay, gossip and innuendo. Here we have very concrete uh, allegations being made and the government does not want to even to investigate it. I am not for a minute saying that the allegations are true. Whether the allegations are true or not can only be found out through, through an investigation. And if you do not have an investigation, you will never know whether these allegations are true or not. But people on the other side of the aisle politically, I mean, we are investigated, we are subject to a lot more scrutiny, even based on innuendo, gossip, and, 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 and just uh, pass, passing by comments. As far as this thing about Rahul Gandhi, uh, you know, insulting a, a, a societal group, there's nothing could be a bigger hogwash than that. Anybody who listens to Rahul Gandhi's speech will realize that he is only referring to three individuals who, who by, by, by some quirky coincidence, have the same last name. Not once, not once has he alluded to any community at all. And knowing Rahul Gandhi, I can vouch for the fact that he is not the kind of person who would ever refer to anybody's community. I'm sure that he did not even have a community in, in mind, even in, 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 as a figment of his imagination, when he was making that rhetorical flur uh, the speech in a rhetorical flourish. And secondly, nobody ever said that the three, mem three names mentioned are actually related to each other. And this proposition that anybody having a, a certain last name are all part of the same community, that itself is wrong. And I'm sure the three names which Rahul Gandhi uh, sort of referred to 
don't necessarily belong to the same community. I mean, I, I mean, there is no evidence to suggest they all belong to the same community. And so this argument which the BJP is making that Rahul Gandhi referred to a socio-economic group and he sort of denigrated them is completely wrong and false. Democracy means the right to speak freely, the right to assemble, right to express your views, right to have a judiciary which is going to be impartial, have a, have a, have a bureaucracy which, will, which, will, which will, will operate without fear or favor, have an armed forces which will, be, which will operate without fear or favor, have a police force which will operate without fear or favor. There are so many, I have a free press, there are so many aspects to a democracy. Somehow to equate the fact that we, only electoral democracy makes up democracy is wrong. Yes, we have an electoral democracy. I completely understand that there is a government which has been duly elected by a, by a larger number of people than the people uh, the other parties got. But does, that alone does not make up democracy. You have to understand that every dictator in the world came through the democratic process. Adolf Hitler was elected in 1933 and he handed a coalition government. I mean, Putin gets elected with about 99% of the votes in his favor. So just because you have electoral democracy doesn't mean we have complete democracy. What Mr. Rahul Gandhi was referring to in his speeches is that institutions which need to be impartial, which need to be neutral, are getting compromised in India. The press, the judiciary, the bureaucracy, the, the, uh, the, the police forces. That is where democracy is getting eroded. And the fact that what has happened to Rahul Gandhi in this reverse engineered process only strengthens his argument and does not weaken his argument. Everything which has happened subsequent into his speech is only reinforcing his speech. So this, is, this argument that he somehow went and said a falsehood about India and sort of denigrated India is completely wrong. In fact, his argument is only reinforced multiple times about what is happening to him personally and to what is happening generally in India. I don't know whether this is a trigger. But even in war, there are rules in war. In India, people don't mind if you defeat an opponent. But people seriously mind if you humiliate an opponent. And the BJP is now going to pay a price for what they are doing. I don't know whether this is a trigger, but the people of India are going to internalize this. They are going to internalize to see the behavior of the BJP. And when they internalize it, that could potentially be a trigger, but they will react at the right time. Just because people don't pour to the streets, I mean, people must understand that protest is not only about coming to the streets and blocking traffic and raising slogans. That political parties and organized organizations, organizations can do it. But the people of India, the vast majority of them, watch everything. They remain silent, but they internalize what's happening. Then they react to it afterwards. See, that was a great outreach program by the Congress party, where the party went to the streets, went closer to the people, had its feet, on the, uh, feet and ears on the ground, and, and got closer to the people. Whether that was the one which, which made them uncomfortable or the questions he raised in par parliament was making them uncomfortable or the kind of attention he was getting because of from the people and the media was making them uncomfortable, I don't know. But the fact is, they are getting uncomfortable. They always say that he does not matter. But the kind of energy and resources they deploy to counter him and to, to, and, and to, and to puncture his narrative says exactly the contrary. And this, this whole point of even denying him the floor of the house and doing a reverse engineered process to get him out of the house clearly shows that, that, that he matters to their, elected, to their political calculus and that's exactly why they're reacting like this.